Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. So if you're passionate about skincare and sleep products that are effective yet affordable then this is the channel for you. So please do make sure you subscribe down below and join our little skincare family and also please do give this video a massive thumbs up because it really does help me out. And so without further ado let's get on to today's video. Apologies if I look a bit puffy and a bit tired today. Hay fever is well and truly underway in the UK right now so I'm Definitely feeling the full force of it and also I'm not getting much sleep recently so I am pretty tired but on a positive note we've got a new video, it's a new day and we are busting the most common skincare myths. So today I'm going to share with you the most common skincare myths that we've all been sucked into believing and we're going to get our myth buster weapon out and karate chop all of those pesky websites that have led us onto a path of misinformation and to be honest with you dishonesty as well. And so the first common myth we have is that you cannot use vitamin C and niacinamide in the same routine. Well, in a matter of fact, you can. You absolutely 100% can. And using them in the same routine is actually going to give you like this pl plethora, plethora of um, amazing skin benefits. And so a study many, many years ago actually tested unstable forms of vitamin C and niacinamide in high temperatures. And so there's a few problems wrong with that. And number one is the study tested unstabilized forms of both of the ingredients. And so now the products that you find on your on your skincare shelves shelfies have actually been stabilized and cutting a long story short and so I'm not like boring you with all like the sciencey bits stabilization is required so the ingredients in the formula don't go through the process of degradation so that it does in a sort of sense of the ingredients are allowed to be preserved for a lot longer have a longer shelf life and sort of be um, maximum effectiveness for your skin. And number two, the study was tested under high temperatures. So you wouldn't leave your products in direct sunlight or outside and you definitely wouldn't put them in an oven when you're like baking something or in a greenhouse when you're you know, sprucing up your tomato plants. So the data from that study is definitely inaccurate and it was actually conducted 50 years ago. It also depends if the vitamin C is a pure lascorbic acid or ascorbic acid or if it's a derivative of vitamin C such as ascorbyl glucoside. So if it's a pure vitamin C then you know you are going to get that tingling sensation and possibly irritation but if it's a derivative then you pretty much are going to get the same benefit but without those side effects. And so combining both of these ingredients whether that be in one product or in two separate products is like I said before just going to give your skin like a plethora of skin benefits from sort of protecting your skin from environmental stresses, anti-inflammatory and also brightening the skin at the same time. And then moving on to the next myth is are facial steam is good for opening your pores and clearing your complexion. There's a lot of divided opinions on whether facial steamers are good or they're bad for the skin. However, facial steamers will do absolutely nothing to clear your complexion and open your pores. In fact, they will increase the skin sensitivity and also dryness. So if you suffer from sensitive skin or dry skin, then this is absolutely not for you. And so you've got to think of the facial steamer being a really hot and humid climate which can cause sweating leading on to dehydration of the skin. Also when we sleep our bodies become warmer which leads on to our skin barrier becoming compromised and this leads to bacteria getting into the skin and then moisture getting out of the skin which is also known as transepidermal water loss and this can be a right pain in the backside because you go to bed you, you know applying all of your lovely skincare products and you have really nice skin and then you wake up with like Mount Everest on your face and you're just like what was even the point so using a facial steamer the skin is faced with an extremely warm environment compromising the skin barrier and also if it's not clean properly then that is a breeding ground of bacteria absolutely not thank you <laughs> also our pores do not open and close in the variation of different temperatures our pores are genetic they will always be there and they play a vital role in lubricating and protecting our skin the pores on our skin actually consist of a hair follicle and a sebaceous gland which creates sebum. Sebum, also known as oil, is incredibly important for our skin. However, the underproduction of sebum, also known as dry skin, and the overproduction of sebum, also known as oily skin, can actually cause a lot of trouble. And the only reason our pores can look bigger is because of the buildup of dead skin cells and excess oil. And if not treated correctly, then that leads on to a buildup of sebaceous filaments, blackheads, and whiteheads. And so to really keep on top of clean pores and sort of diminishing the size of your pores, 
use chemical exfoliants like BHAs, salicylic acid, because that is oil soluble, so it can really get deep into the pore and um, past the oil and just sort of like remove it and just sort of evaporate it. And also use AHAs like glycolic acid or lactic acid just to really sort of remove the dead skin cells and the buildup of dead skin cells. And also it's really important to use products that are suited for your skin type. And the next myth we have is toothpaste is good for getting rid of spots. Hands up, don't lie, hands up, go on. We are all guilty of doing this. Like those pesky whiteheads and spots and blemishes just really needed like an overnight toothpaste treatment because you're like you'd wake up and you would think oh that is just going to get rid of that spot well toothpaste can dry out a spot and in some instances reduce the inflammation however the ingredients in your standard toothpaste tube should never ever be used on breakouts ingredients like menthol baking soda essential oils alcohol and hydrogen peroxide are incredibly irritating to the skin and it can actually compromise the skin's barrier resulting in more breakouts and inflammation of the skin nowadays there are so many better options in reducing the size of the spots and basically clearing the spots. Things like pimple patches, spot treatments, BHA salicylic acid or even just leaving them alone. And don't pop them. I mean we are all guilty of doing that. However that can lead on to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and that dark spot can last on your skin for up to two years. So just don't pop it because that spot will eventually go down in like a week or so instead of having it on your face for two years. If I'd known that like five, seven years ago, I would not have popped all of my spots. And the last but most certainly not least myth of today is do pore strips actually remove blackheads? And so another thing that we're all guilty of is having a little pamper night, putting a face mask on, putting a pore strip, putting some cucumbers on your eyes like, oh zen but when you have to peel that pore strip off that is definitely not zen like at all however it can actually be quite satisfying looking at all of those like little gunky things on that pore strip on that piece of material and just being like oh my nose is fantastically clear <laughs> however but what your standard pore strip can only do is remove the top layer of the sebaceous filament the blackhead or the oxidized oil it actually doesn't help to remove or clear your pores which are a buildup of bacteria dead skin cells and excess oil in order to remove that buildup use an ingredient like salicylic acid which is going to travel past through the excess oil and unclog the pores definitely a more effective and safe method on the skin. Another thing to note about the pore strips is the irritation caused by the adhesive action of the material. Peeling that off is actually really damaging the skin's surface, compromising the skin's barrier. So that is going to lead on to a lot more bacteria, a lot more sort of dead skin cells and excess oil because your skin has just been like, oh my god, like it's so incredibly dry, I'm going to produce more oil which gets clogged up. And so your standard pore strips, for instance, like the Biore pore strips, um, actually use ingredients like polysilicone-13, and that is um, sort of giving your skin that conditioning, smoothing effect, when in fact, it's not really sort of cleaned your skin. It just, you know, feels like it's taken all of that sort of rough textured blackheads away. Um, and it also include ingredients like menthol, which, you know, can have that cooling effect, but really be, can be incredibly sensitizing to the skin. And it uses um, ingredients like tea tree oil and witch hazel, which again, can be really sort of sensitizing to the skin and also dry out the skin at the same time. So even though they are not the most harmful product out there, you can still get safer and more effective options if you still want that sort of removal peeling sensation on the nose. However, knowing what I know now about pore strips and their inability to actually remove the source of the problem causing the blackhead, then yeah, they're a waste of money. Absolute waste of money in my opinion. And so that's only a handful of skincare myths out there that we've all been sucked into believing. Honestly, trust me when I say this, there are so many more out there. So maybe expect another video like this in the near future. And <laughs> um, so I really do hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. See you later guys.